Hello everyone, I am Casey the Gamer, and it's time for another game review. This time I am checking out the over-the-top, stylish, rocking good time known as Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush was developed by Tango Gameworks and published by Bethesda. It was announced and released on January 25th, 2023 for PC and the Xbox Series X and Series S. I don't think I saw anything about it until a few days after the release, but I took a look at one trailer and I knew that I had to play this game. Hi-Fi Rush is an incredible blend of action, beat-em-up, hack-and-slash, and rhythm games. I had an absolute blast with this game, and I am so excited to talk about it. Let's take a closer look at Hi-Fi Rush and rock out. There are spoilers ahead for the story of the game. For this one, I won't be going as in-depth on the story as I do with the others because this game is just so cool, funny, and beautiful that I don't want to spoil everything. Right off the bat, I have to say that I recommend everyone check it out. Anyway, the game opens up with self-proclaimed rock star, Chai, arriving at the Vandalay Technologies campus as a volunteer for Project Armstrong, which is a test for cybernetic limb replacement. The Vandalay CEO, Kale Vandalay, sets Chai up to be a garbage collector. Real nice guy. As the replacement of Chai's arm is about to begin, Kale throws away Chai's music player. Again, real nice guy. The music player ends up falling onto Chai's chest, causing it to be embedded in the power supply for his arm. Chai is now able to feel the rhythm of the world. This gets Chai labeled as a defect and causes the robotic security to go after him. Chai gets attacked by the robots, which activates the music player. Chai summons an electromagnetic trash collecting stick and uses it to create a guitar-shaped weapon to defend himself. While battling his way through the campus, Chai eventually encounters a robot cat named 808. An unknown ally uses 808 to communicate with Chai. Chai battles a giant robot and manages to defeat it. After that, 808 leads him to the hideout of his new ally, Peppermint. Chai and Peppermint end up teaming up to expose a conspiracy about Project Armstrong called Spectra. Peppermint is working with a small team to figure things out. Chai ends up battling one of the Vandalay executives named Rekka and manages to defeat her, gaining her personal passkey. Peppermint plugs the passkey into Rekka's computer and finds some information about Spectra. It's an AI used in Project Armstrong that would allow Vandalay to control the minds of anyone with one of their robotic limbs. Suddenly, a call from Kale and the other executives comes through. Chai basically throws down the gauntlet and says that he and Peppermint are going to kick their ass with their own tech. Peppermint is annoyed that Chai dropped her name and quickly presses the button to end the call and find an escape route for her and Chai. They decide to take the fight to Vandalay to destroy Spectra. They begin going after the other executives to put a stop to things. While going after Zanzo, they meet the other person that Peppermint has been working with, Macaron and his robot Cinnamon. Macaron works for Vandalay, but doesn't like how it's changed and wants to help fix things. Macaron and Cinnamon join the fight 
and Zanzo ends up defeated, allowing our heroes to obtain his passkey as well. The next executive is Corsica. The only problem is, she doesn't have a passkey that they can just take from her. They'll have to get her to give them the password. Corsica was also kept in the dark about Spectra. After it was mentioned to her by Chai, she begins to look into it. A fight almost could have been avoided, but Chai had to open his big mouth, causing Corsica to get mad. Chai beats Corsica in a fight, knocking her out. He grabs her and takes her with him. During the escape, a robot that Kale is speaking through catches up to Chai and Corsica. Corsica questions Kale about Spectra before he tries to kill her. Chai jumps in the way to save her, but Corsica was still badly hurt, but luckily she was saved with robotic parts due to the help of peppermint, macaron, and cinnamon. Corsica decides to join the band to bring down Kale. The battle with the Vandalay executives continues. Along the way, we find out that Kale is actually Peppermint's brother. And everything is totally cool. Nobody in the group treats her any differently because of it, which Peppermint was worried about. After that, our heroes encounter Mimosa and defeat her in spectacular fashion on stage in front of a huge crowd. They grab her pass key and make a quick escape. Chai and the others break into Vandalay headquarters and fight their way through the building until they encounter the next executive, Roquefort, who turns into a giant werewolf robot. After an insane fight, and with some dumb luck, he is defeated and his passkey is obtained. Once they reach Kale's office, they run into Roxanne Vandalay, former CEO and mother of Kale and Peppermint. The heroes get trapped in some kind of barrier and Roxanne explains that she's going to help Kale no matter what. As it turns out, Kale is using Spectra to control her which is how he got control of the company to begin with. Kale and Roxanne leave to go activate Spectra on a large scale. After a brief moment of self-doubt, Chai manages to break through the barrier and everyone goes after Kale. On the way to battle Kale, our band of heroes has to deal with a giant robot. It is so damn big. After cutting off one of the robot's arms, Cinnamon interfaces with the severed arm in order to use it. With the help of everyone else lifting it up, Cinnamon shoots the robot and destroys it. Cinnamon is damaged in the process, but he's okay. Chai and the others move on to confront Kale. Chai and 808 end up separated from the others, and Kale takes control of Chai, until 808 destroys the control attachment on his hand. Chai's music player activates and he gets back up to take on Kale. Chai and Kale have an epic battle, but Chai absolutely wrecks Kale. Peppermint, Macaron, and Corsica join in the battle at the end to help finish off Kale once and for all. With Kale defeated, they grab his pass key and Peppermint uses it and all of the others to shut down Spectra. With Spectra shut down, Roxanne retakes control of her company, and both Macaron and Corsica want to help her get things back on track. Roxanne even offers Chai a job. She says that Project Armstrong needs an ambassador, a rock star. Chai begins to think it over, and then the credits roll. During the credits, it shows the various characters working or running around before meeting up at the end, sitting together watching the sunset, and it is revealed that Chai did in fact take the ambassador job. There is a bit of post-game story content. 
It has to do with spectra signals popping up all over the Vandalay campus. Investigating all of these signals will lead to a secret ending. And that's all I have to say about that. Anyway, it's hard to really describe how wonderful and awesome the story of this game is. It's full of action, humor, style, and endless amounts of heart. The characters and their interactions with each other really makes this game something special. The gameplay in Hi-Fi Rush feels incredible. It's one of my favorite hack and slash games that I've played in recent years. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not just a hack and slash game. It's a hack and slash, rhythm, beat em up game with some platforming thrown in. The game just oozes style. You play as Chai, and he uses a guitar shaped weapon to battle the various cannon fodder robots and crazy bosses that you'll encounter throughout the game. There are light attacks, heavy attacks, and tons of combos at your disposal. The rhythm game aspect comes into play in a few different ways. During combat, you aren't required to attack on rhythm because everything you do will sync up with the music regardless. But if you do time things correctly, your basic attacks and finishing moves will deal more damage. Chai is also able to parry enemy attacks, and I love a good parry in a video game. The parry took a little bit for me to get used to, but once I did, I ended up loving it. Parrying is sometimes required to finish off the more powerful enemies or bosses. Well, with the enemies, it just makes it easier to finish them off if you do nail it. Boss fights, however, you have pretty much no choice but to nail them when they do pop up, but there is a little room for error. You'll get multiple chances though, so no worries. And the game does have some very generous checkpoints in case you die. In addition to the various attacks and parrying, Chai can also dodge attacks, which is nice. And in terms of movement, Chai also has a grappling hook. It can be used to traverse the stages and it can also be used in combat to get closer to the enemies. You can't beat a good grappling hook. Also, in order to activate certain things in the stages, you'll have to press the buttons properly in the correct order Otherwise, it won't work, and you'll have to start all over. Chai is not alone in his adventure. Along the way, he will be aided by Peppermint, Macaron, and Corsica. They each have their own specialties in combat and dealing with obstacles throughout the stages. Peppermint can destroy enemy energy shields with her laser, allowing you to damage them. In addition to that, she can shoot her laser at various things throughout the stage that will open up a way for Chai to proceed. Macaron can destroy the armor plating on heavily armored enemies, as well as destroy the physical shields that some enemies carry. Macaron can also knock down certain walls in the stages. There's usually a lot of goodies hidden behind them, and some of them allow you to progress further. And Corsica uses wind-based attacks, which seem to help stun enemies and also puts out fires caused by certain enemies. Throughout the stages, she can put out fires that lead to some hidden areas. Corsica will also use her wind attacks to overload some machines, which allows you to make it further in the stage. In addition to all of that, there is an item shop that allows you to buy more moves for Chai and all of the other characters, health increase items, which you can also find fragments of in the stages, items to increase your reverb gauge, which when it's full allows you to use a special move. You can also find fragments of these items in the stages. There are also batteries that you can use to fill up the reverb gauge and energy tanks used to fill up your health when needed. 
You can also get chips that will give you various effects and you're able to upgrade them. You can also buy an item to increase the amount of chips that you can equip. Your main form of currency is gears. You can find tons of them just sitting around the stages and defeating enemies will also get them to drop. Hi-Fi Rush features 12 stages and they are packed full of action, great music, and fun. There's a fair amount of boss fights as well, typically in the form of the Vandalay executives. You usually fight one of them every two stages and they're all pretty fun and unique, making you put what you've learned up to that point to the test. And then you end up finishing them off in crazy fun, over the top fashion. They're all great, but I think my favorite is probably Kale at the very end. It's just an epic fight and you have to use everything at your disposal. Upon beating the game, you unlock level select so you can go back and increase your score, which is great for me because I wasn't always the best at this game and I wanna go back and try to do better now that I'm better at the game. In addition to that, you unlock a new difficulty mode and an extra mode called the Rhythm Tower which has you fight tons of enemies in a survival mode. Beating the game also unlocks the option to buy new costumes for all of your characters, ranging from badass to cute to hilarious. There's also post-game content, which requires you to find these locked doors in eight of the stages. These lead to some challenges that will eventually lead you to the secret ending of the game. This game is honestly a blast from start to finish. While I wasn't always the best at it, I had a huge smile on my face the entire time I was playing it. Everything just looks so cool and stylish, it's hard not to have a good time. Even outside of the cutscenes and just during the gameplay, the characters have so much personality and I love it. I can't wait to play this game more and more. The graphics for this game are gorgeous. Seriously, just look at them. They are beautiful, bright and vibrant and just so nice to look at. The game mostly uses the 3D graphics for its cutscenes, but there are also a few wonderfully animated anime style cutscenes and they also look fantastic. The characters are so expressive in the animated cutscenes the 3D cutscenes, and in the gameplay as well. I love it. And the character designs and art direction in this game are off the charts amazing. Every character has such a good design. The sound effects in this game are incredible. Everything hits just right as you're kicking butt and grooving to the music. No complaints at all. And the soundtrack. The soundtrack is an important part of any game, but it's one of the most important things in a game like this. And the soundtrack is so good, I love it so much. It really feels good kicking bad guy butt and rocking out at the same time. And there's so many times where the music and the visuals just hit that sweet spot of perfection. So I thoroughly enjoyed Hi-Fi Rush. I am so excited to go through and play it again. It was really a breath of fresh air and it's one of my favorite games of 2023 so far. It just hit all of the right marks for me. The story, the gameplay, the visuals, the music, and the characters just knocked it out of the park. This is a game that I can't recommend enough. It's a game full of heart, rocking good times, and tons of fun. Do yourselves a favor and check out Hi-Fi Rush. You won't be disappointed. Thank you all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And if you want to see more of me, you can catch me streaming all kinds of stuff over on my Twitch channel. 
which is twitch.tv slash CaseyTheGamer91. And I also have a Patreon where you can get perks like early video access and some other pretty cool stuff. And that is patreon.com slash CaseyTheGamer91. You can find both of those links and all of my other links in the description below. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to catch you next time. Peace out.